three is impossible to prepare for, well, you are not alone. But what if I told you the secret isn't predicting what's going to come up on paper three, but rather spotting patterns and revising smarter. So let me show you what you can do to feel confident, preparing for and entering into the final AQA paper. Paper three. Hey everyone, and welcome to Miss Estrick Biology. I'm Miss Estrick, a biology teacher since 2009. And in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you what to expect for paper three. Not predictions, because basically there's no accurate way to predict what's going to come up on any of the papers, particularly paper three. And what I mean by that is, you might have seen my topics for paper one, topics for paper two video, based on past paper analysis, what commonly comes up, and what hasn't been assessed in a while. But Essentially, any of those topics apply to paper three as well because paper three is topics one to eight. So anything that I said for paper one and paper two are also the ones that are more likely for paper three, but maybe re-watch this video after you've sat paper one and paper two because any of those topics that I said that didn't come up on paper one and paper two, then maybe they're more likely to come up on paper three. But for now, we're gonna be focusing more on what to expect for paper three and therefore how to prepare. Now, if you do want more help preparing for any of the exam papers, then I've got my pick and mix lessons live, but they are selling out quickly. So if you do want to come to live tuition group classes with me, covering some of the hardest skills, the hardest topics, and I'm there the night before every exam, including paper three, focusing on the essay, then I'll link that below so you can come and join me. But let's get into then what to expect for paper three, AQA A-level biology. Paper three is a fully synoptic paper, which means any of the theory or the practicals or the math skills could come up on paper three. It includes a mixture of structured short answer and longer answer questions based on theory and practical skills. It is not just the practical paper, which some people misunderstand because there's a slightly bigger focus on practical questions, but you still get knowledge based questions you still get application as well and the two big things to be aware of are number one you are guaranteed to have 15 marks of critical analysis questions and what that means is the types of questions where you might have the details on a method and then the data in a table or a graph and you have to evaluate a statement evaluate a conclusion come to a conclusion and evaluate it say whether you agree basically you're looking for evidence to suggest why you would and wouldn't support a particular conclusion Conclusion. Now that won't just be a one 15 mark question, it'll be across the whole paper, multiple questions that will add up to 15 marks. And then the big one of course is, at the back of paper three, there is a 25 mark essay. And you get a choice of two titles, you pick one of those, and hopefully you're gonna get as close to 25 marks as possible. Especially if you've come to my pick and mix lesson the night before covering the essay. Now let's think about the essay in particular. You might have seen my essay number one video, and I think the second one is out now already. It might be out already, or at least I filmed it and it's coming out very, very soon for you. But here are six titles that I would recommend that you would create a plan for. And in those two videos I've got on the essay titles, I do a plan for them. But I suggest you have a go at planning them and writing them as well, because based on past paper analysis and patterns and algorithms that I've looked at, these might be more likely to come up. Not predictions, but they might be more likely to come up. So plan them, but still obviously prep all of them. So let's take a look at this list of six titles. Number one, the importance of DNA as an information carrying molecule and its uses in gene technologies. Number two, the importance of proteins in the control of processes and responses in organisms. Number three, the importance of water in living organisms. Number four, the importance of DNA and gene expression in organisms. Number five, the importance of enzymes in living organisms. And number six, the importance of bonding and bonds in biological molecules and processes. So as I said, those are not predictions, but you do see reoccurring themes. And some of those themes haven't come up in a long time or ever. So that's why I've suggested those could be potential themes where a title like one of those might come up this year. And if you do want the whole plan, like I said, check out one of these two videos or join me in the Pick and Mix Essay Masterclass where we'll be planning at least one of those in detail and go through some general questions and tips as well. Now, going back to the topic, 
topics. As I said, it's not possible to predict what will come up on paper three compared to topics I've already said for one and two. So instead, I'm gonna reshare with you the topics that I've said for paper one and paper two that haven't been assessed in a while and also commonly get assessed because those could also be the ones that come up in paper three if they aren't assessed in paper one or two. So here are eight topics for paper one, which might also come up in paper three. Obviously, when I say they might also come up, anything could come up, but these are just ones that if I was doing my A-levels, I would definitely make sure I knew inside out. So number one is mass transport in plants. Number two is DNA, RNA, and DNA replication. Number three, protein synthesis. Number four, hemoglobin and the transport of oxygen. So a little bit on mass transport in animals there. Number five, meiosis and potentially chromosome mutations linked to that. Number six, gas exchange, but specifically gas exchange in fish, terrestrial insects, or plants. Number seven, DNA genes and chromosomes. And number eight, immunity. Now this did come up quite recently, but it didn't come up in paper one, did come from paper three so you never know and then the list for paper two which also applies to paper three number one is gene expression this hasn't really been covered much at all in the last few years number two is nervous coordination again not been assessed much recently number three photosynthesis another core topic that hasn't featured heavily a lot recently number four populations doesn't commonly get assessed it does every so often but it hasn't come up in a while so it's a small part of the spec maybe there'll be a little bit on it this year Year, maybe they won't. And number five, energy in ecosystems. And just one general tip, once you've sat paper two, reflect back on, did photosynthesis or respiration get assessed? Because if one of those did, it might mean that paper three, the other one will be assessed in. Because photosynthesis and respiration are two core fundamental topics. And one or the other of those tends to get assessed quite heavily each year. And the final thing I just want to go back to is where I said 15 marks will cover critical analysis. Analysis. And if you have no idea what I mean by that, even after telling you it's the evaluate questions, then I do have an entire video on critical analysis. So I recommend you watch that next to know how to revise for those questions, how to prepare for them. And I've got a pack of those questions for free on my website called the Skills Assessment Bundle. So there we have it. That's what to expect for paper three, some potential topics and essay titles that might come up, but please don't rely on those thinking they are literally predictions because as I said, everything I share with you is purely based on past paper analysis for me spotting patterns and trends. That doesn't mean I'm predicting they're coming up. It just tells you that these are the ones that frequently come up and haven't come up in a while. So maybe they're more likely to, not definitely. So use that to inform your revision, but don't solely prepare or revise those topics. You still need to be prepared for potentially any topic coming up. So I hope you found that helpful for today. And I hope to see you in some of the pick and mix lessons where I can give you some last minute help the night before each of the exams or in the run up to each of the exams, focusing on things like the practical skills, the extended response questions, the comprehension, and also some of the hardest topics which might come up in 2025. That's it for this week. I'll see you soon.